Hey, Tom Hall here from the Blue Root team. Here to tell you a bit more about Zoho projects and more specifically, just getting started and understanding the program. So Zoho projects is probably one of their more powerful applications. And exactly as it sounds, it's a way to manage projects across teams um, and do it in uh, very exact detail. So let's get into what that looks like. Here I'm using the Zoho Remotely Suite, and within this I'll just, under the Collaborate Remotely, I'll click on the projects. So this will open up Zoho Projects, and even if you've never used it before, this is what it's going to look like. And I'll just make this a little bit smaller here. So what this is, is there's a default project associated with it. So <clears throat> how the structure works is it's just a series of different projects that you might have. So there's one already created for you. You can create a new project if you'd like, um, just by clicking this here. But for the purpose of this, let's actually use the default project just as a way to kind of understand and learn the uh, system. Real quickly here, just to show you the different statuses that you can have or the different things you're seeing. Percent done, that's based on tasks and how many have been completed. <clears throat> you can see, um, there's tasks here, milestones is, so tasks are really the underlying thing, things you need to do. And then many tasks build up to a milestone. So you have to complete uh, tasks within a milestone. And then an issue is something that maybe wasn't planned, but needs to be accounted for and that's an issue. So, and the 7% takes the average of all of these. The status here is an important one to basically say, is it active, is it in progress, is it completed? And you can manage the actual projects um, with this status here. <clears throat> now clicking into the project itself, this is what shows up. And so it's your initial dashboard, which will show your project description, some analytical items to understand exactly what's going on, you know, the status, anything that's overdue will appear here, how each of your team members are doing, and then any issues that might exist. And we can see that there's 11 uh, and eight of them are open. So you can see that. There's other things here too, but the, the overall point is this is just analytics for your team. So I was kind of saying before, the underlying thing of Zoho Projects is the task. So let's click on tasks as an example. So this is the classic view and how tasks are organized as this is what's called the task list. And then these are tasks. So if you want to create a task list, you just go over here, hover over this drop down, add a task list and say new task list. And then if I wanted to add a new task, I could actually do it right here or here, or I can do it up in the top right corner. I can add a task, say new task, and it'll ask me, first of all, for a description. So this is a new task, and which task list it should be part of. And so I'll put it as part of this new task list. And so now I've created this task and now this editor opens up. And so this is a pretty <clears throat> key editor, I'll call it, um, a, a really nice way to manage all things related to this activity. So <clears throat> here's what it is here. And you'll see the other tasks in the task list starting to appear down here. And so that's a nice feature. <clears throat> but what you can do within here is you can start specifying things related to this task. So at, at the starting point, there's the description that I created and then task information. So things that are inherent with the task. So first one who's in charge of the task. So I'll just assign it to myself. I'll skip over some of these. I'll, I'll focus on the key ones. So that's definitely one who's actually in charge of the task and you can have multiple people if you have multiple people in your organization. A status. So you could say this is in progress or maybe it's to be tested. If you're testing certain features, you can do it that way. You can specify a start date, so today, and then a due date, maybe a week from now, and then the duration will automatically be calculated. Priority, so this is a way that tasks or teams can prioritize their tasks as the name suggests. So I'll just maybe put this as a medium. And then completion perspective percentage. So this is a way to, if this is a really big task to manage internally, say, hey, I'm working on it and I'm about 50% done. 
you can create quick tags for yourself saying, you know, this is something related to maybe product development. Just as a quick way to classify different types of tasks that you have. And then any kind of reminders. So as the due date approaches, do I want to be uh, reminded? I can use that. Or do I want this task to come up many times? So for example, if it's um, something that you have to do, a service you provide on a monthly basis, you'll, you'll want this task to recur. So those are all the information. Now, the really powerful part are these things down here, things that you can add to each individual task. So comments, you know, you can say, you know, working on it, something like that. But you can also start collaborating. So you can actually use this at sign and start typing your colleague's name and say, so hi, Mr. Blue Root Software, I need your help. So by doing something like that, now they'll receive a ping and they know to come into this task see what's going on and provide any help that they can. A subtask, so as it suggests, you know, a single task is a, a big work item, could have many things within it. And so you can add subtasks. Um, so we'll call this one um, new subtask as an example. Add the subtask. And just like that, I could click into this and it'll actually appear over here as you can see and it has all the same thing. So you can see how this hierarchy starts layering on top of each other. <clears throat> Log hours is an important one. This is a one that you can, if you're a billable type company and you need to keep track of how many hours you're spending on each individual task, that's what you can do. So I can say, today I spent you know, four hours on this task and I can add those hours and that'll roll up in all my reporting. Documents, you can attach files, so you can just grab things from your desktop or Zoho Work Drive if you guys use that, um, and all that can come into the particular task. Forum dependency issues, uh, I'll, I won't talk about as much because they're less used, um, but one cool thing is activities is you can see a, a total history of everything that happened in this task. So starting down here, I can see I added the task, then I assigned the user, then I updated the status two times, made the start date, end date. So all these things here, you get a whole history of the task, which is pretty powerful. So like I said, that's the really basis uh, of the entire application is the task. And where you're gonna see a lot of power is using these tasks, creating these tasks and collaborating on these tasks. So what well, you might be asking, okay, what about all these other things here? I'll quickly touch on them each because, but they all build on the task. Real quickly before I move on from the task is <clears throat> this Kanban view, which a lot of people like. So if you're maybe a manager or you just wanna get a high level view of what's going on, you can use this Kanban view and you can see how many tasks are open, in progress, in review, tested, all the different statuses that you have. So you can scroll all the way over. And very easily, you can say, oh, this one here, actually, I know that whoever is working on it, and you could click and drag it over and update the status just like that. So it's a great way as maybe a manager to see what's going on and, and update the, the task tracker accordingly. So everything, like I said, builds off the task, but let's just quickly touch on each of the other things down here. So calendar, this will automatically start plotting the different tasks, milestones that you have related to what you've put into that particular task. So remember I created this new task and now it automatically has been put in my calendar and I know I have to do this over this period of time. Gantt charts and reports. So there's a bunch of things here. You can see how your resources are being used, planned versus actual. I won't go into this yet, but <clears throat> the Gantt chart's a cool one. I will go into it and you can start seeing, okay, how is this playing out? How does my time look? How does my team's time look? And I can see this new task, well, it does overlap a lot of these other things. Maybe it was poorly planned. So you can use the Gantt chart to do that. Documents here, this is where you can start storing documents related to uh, this particular project. So just like you could to the individual task, you can do it um, to an overall project level. And you can just add them the same way I did before. You can create a new folder, a new document. You can upload files. It's all doable within this document section. Milestones I touched on a couple times, but the idea is many tasks are built into a milestone. Um, and so the idea is you can say within a week, we need to get these 10 tasks done. And, and so as an example, this SEO and marketing milestone 
we have these task lists within them. And so the goal is to complete all of these tasks within the task lists by the time that the milestone is up. And it will remind me, saying three days to go to, to do these individual things. Timesheet, I can start seeing how people are billing their time. So I put some time into this new task and now it's rolling up here. I can group it by date, I can group it by user, I can see all of that. There's a bunch of other things here. So just adding users, understanding what's going on in the project is your feed, adding some expenses. So if you do have you know, expenses you might want to bill back to the client, you can add them here. And then the only thing I've touched on this a couple times is issues. So if something goes wrong, you can create an issue, attach it to a task, and it actually works just the same way, right? You'll have the user who's involved, the status, and then you can start logging hours, comments, and attachments related to the issue. So similar to a task, but basically an unplanned task is what an issue is. So that's the very, very quick overview of Zoho projects and what you can expect. When you understand that, you, what you'll want to do next is just create a new project. So come back to the projects. New project will be in the type, top right. Just say new project. It'll ask you for a start and end date. You don't have to, but you can choose to put it in. So maybe it's a month. Say this is a new project. And everything else here is optional. You can choose to read through each of them and, and choose to add them. The only thing that I'll mention is this is where you can decide, okay, do I want Gantt charts in this project? That seems overkill, I can turn it off, or maybe I want it. And then finally, project access. Do I want it to be a per user or, or party by invite, or do I want it public? So anyone who has access to Zoho projects can see it. And then you can just hit add. It takes a little bit of time, and now you have your new project here. Go back to projects, and you can get an overview of all the projects going on. So there it is, that's how you can use Zoho projects. I hope this was useful. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions, thanks.